So I'm going to show you how to do some procedural texturing. Hopefully this will be uh, useful for monsters and so on. So I'm just going to hide that text because we don't need it. And essentially this box here, I'll even hide the Bezier curve and the light and so on. So this box has a simple shading texture on it. If I zoom in, essentially we've got our principled BSDF shader and a base color of green. Um, if you don't see green, then push Z and then go to Material Preview. You might be in Solid um, and it's not there. So the start point really is to create a material. So you'd be hitting this plus and then starting new. So I'm going to use this material 3 as my start point. It's not currently assigned. So in edit mode, I would click assign. And there you go. It's gone white. I could make it any color I like from that color wheel. Doesn't really matter for this purpose at the moment. What we're going to do is use a built-in texture to provide where the bumps are. So I'm going to add Shift A. Actually, I might turn on my screencast keys. That might be pretty handy. Screencast keys, tick the box, and then get out of there. So there we go. You can see up there there's this, the keys that I'm pushing. I'm going to go Shift A, search, and there is a noise texture. V O R O. There we go. I have no idea how to pronounce that, but this noise texture is particularly useful. Now, if I was to plug the color straight into the color, you can see that essentially it's generating a whole bunch of areas of different color. Now that's quite handy for me. If you're after a really playful color system, then you might go for something like that. But there are a bunch of things that we can do that will um, change that. You could make it black and white if you wanted to. So at the moment it's got RGB, so you could go Shift A, search. Um, BW is enough and you can go RGB to BW and you just drop it in there so that's changed everything to just grayscale so that could be useful might not be but what we're going to be working on here is turning this um, into um, essentially a bumpy looking exterior so again I'm going to come from um, going to plug into this normal map down here. So I'm just going to arrange things a little bit better so we can sort of see what's happening. Um, I'm going to start with a bump map. So I go Shift A, Search, B, U, M, P, click Bump Map and drop it into place. So this normal is going to connect to that normal. Nothing's happening so far because there's no data coming in from there. But if I take Distance and plug that into the height, then essentially you get the impression of scales or at least some kind of leathery bumpy sort of texture. Now that's all based on this noise texture. Now the color um, of that noise texture, um, if I was to disconnect that and then plug it back in over here, the color, that's essentially what's happening. Th those areas are helping to define where the bumps are. Now we can do some uh, modification to what's happening with this noise texture. We run it through a color ramp. So I go Shift A, search, C O L O, and of course it's American spelling, so don't put a U in there. Um, we're after color ramp and we want to drop it into place. The gap's not wide enough, but if I drop it, there it is, it's dropped into place. So Zooming in here, I've got some slider bars. I've got black on one side, white on the other. Now if I grab this and move it in, you'll sort of see that it's cut off the top. I can add in extras, so if I hit plus, and then I can click on that, move it that way, you'll see some adjustments. But if I click on that, this color down here is the one that I want to, um, to change. I'll just zoom out slightly so I can see what I'm doing. If I drag that down so it's dark, I've got some different options. So essentially, if you keep it nice and spread out, you won't get too many weird sort of shapes. Because if we zoom right in there, you can kind of see some extra little circles. So just keep it nice and smooth, and you'll get a, a fairly good bumpy looking system. But you could swing it slightly more one way than the other. Um, and we can use that a little bit later on. 
Now there's a plugin that isn't on by default that's particularly useful. I'm going to show it to you now. So we go Edit, Preferences, and it's called Node Wrangler. So you just type in here after you've chosen add-ons, type Node, N-O-D-E. And this one here, tick the box, Node Wrangler, and then click and that's fine. So now with this one clicked I can go Control T and it will pop out some mapping coordinates. This is really helpful because if I think my bumps aren't the size that I want I can change the scale. So if I click and drag all of those three then I can just type once the number three push enter and then it just got a whole bunch smaller. So whatever the scale or size of your monster is you could make that whatever size you like. So I could do that five and it gets much much smaller okay other things that you can look at is this looks this side here looks like they're innies I guess because if you look at the top it's got a shadow there but it's catching the light at the bottom um, other places may be a little different so we can look at the texture coordinates is it generated or what happens if I connect the normals in nothing what if I connect the UV in that works only because it has been UV unwrapped um, I can look at the object coordinates, that works quite well, but you'll notice the scale changed a wee bit there. Um, if I don't want innies where there's outies, then of course you could go over here and swap the black to that side and white to that side. Or, you could put an invert, shift A, search, INV for invert, and I could drop that in there. So now it looks like it's coming out. So the top of those bumps is catching the light and the bottom is not. So that's one way that you could swap it. And if that turns out to be wrong, you just flick it back the other way if you want it to have some um, any bumps, I guess. So again, in summary, so far, we've got a light green color on our principal BSDF. I've used um, this noise texture, Voronoi texture, no idea how to actually pronounce it. I used a color ramp that I can do some adjustments to the bumps if I want to. I've chosen to invert it so that the bumps appear to be poking out. I can adjust things like the, um, the distance and so on and strength in some cases. Um, but you'll have to do some quite drastic changes there to see anything. So you could make it really, really subtle, I guess. If I let that down, just one little click, it's quite subtle but you can crank it up um, to higher strengths. There is no extra geometry added though. So if you look side on, there's no bumps there. It's just the appearance of bumps. It's not a displacement modifier. It's just the appearance. It's a trick of the light. Now, the next thing, sort of stuff that you might want to do that can be particularly uh, useful is what if the top of the bump had a slightly different color than the bottom of the bump? Um, so I'm going to start plugging things into here in the base color. So I could take this color here, boom. So now we've got black and white dots. It's black at the top, white at the bottom. But what if I don't want black and white? What if I want some other more creative color set? But I want it to at least be controlled by, um, by that same noise texture. So essentially what I'm going to do is mix some colors together. So I'm going to go Shift A, Search, and then choose Mix RGB. I'm going to need two of those, so I'm going to duplicate that later. But if I grab that and plonk it down here, it's plugged into color one. Now color one doesn't actually have a color. I want to go from color to factor. So I can then plug into these colors some people just go straight into those boxes, that's fine. One of my personal preferences is to have um, RGB um, things over here, but it can look a little bit messy, so you can go add RGB and use one of these. So I could pull down to red and do that instead. There's really no difference, it just looks a bit messier I guess. It's essentially the same thing though. Um, <coughs> So I've now got a green base with uh, red on top. I can also um, do some other little adjustments to sort of, um, I guess, adjust quite how much um, these are being mixed. So I could put in um, an invert in here, Shift A, 
search invert. So if I pop that in there, if instead of red on the top, I can just do a little swap there, red on top, green at the bottom, green at the uh, uh, green on top, red at the bottom. It depends on what you want to do for your your monster texture. Um, there's various other things that I would suggest that you do is muck around with the scale, as I've mentioned already. You can make it large, you can make it small. One of the major benefits of doing this is that you don't have to UV unwrap. You don't have to worry too much about seams. So for example, if I wanted to turn this into something round, I'll just go into modifiers and put in a subdivision surface. If I can find it, there it is. And I'll crank that up a little bit. It now looks a little bit, I guess, like a dragon egg if you wanted to do it that way. Um, you could scale it in the Z axis and next thing you know you've got something that kind of looks like a dragon egg. So there you go, there's a dragon egg. I've now just made a movie for um, anything with dragons in it. Okay, so it, the good thing about a procedural texture is that you can apply it to um, an entire surface without having to UV unwrap it. It's really, really handy for monsters. Um, anything with some weird sort of, I don't know, chicken leg sort of skin um, or chicken skin. Um, you could do it for powder coating because powder coating on metal, if you're making some kind of a robot, you might want to make that look a little bit more interesting. Um, it's a way of getting your texturing done without using pictures. So you don't have to pay for any pictures here. This, um, where is it? That noise texture is built in. There are other noise textures, so you could go Shift A, Search, and I think it's under Noise. So we go Noise Texture. We could try that instead. Oh, that one's got a distance. This one doesn't. Nah, let's try that. Nothing. Lots of other, yeah, so there's a little bit different sort of bumpy looking um, appearance. Looks quite interesting, but not necessarily what you want. There are several other noise textures that you could play around with um, and pop those in instead. Um, textures. So you've got a bunch of textures. This is where it is. So you go under texture, Voronoi texture, but you've got sky, point, noise, magic texture. I don't know what that one looks like. Let's have a look just for just for fun. There's no distance on it though. Um, play with those, experiment, find out what works for your particular project. Um, and that's hopefully helpful. I'll try to zoom out a little bit and just organize it so you can see everything that you need. Make that a little bit smaller. Alright, we can nearly see that. I'll just run through it. These two were added by clicking that one and then um, Control T with a Node Wrangler on. This color is coming through an invert node just to swap it so that they are outy bumps. If you want them inny bumps, then you, that's the color invert. Whereas that one is the outy versus inny. So you can sort of change those sort of factors. And it's mixing red with green. You could have green with a really, really dark green. So if you're just wanting a slightly different appearance, um, two different factors of green, so it looks a little bit more interesting. There's lots of different options that you could do. You can even double stack the mix parts um, and then essentially that's coming into your base color. You could even put it into subsurface color and various other scattering um, and then to principal PSDF and then your material output. So hopefully that's um, going to be useful to some people who are making monsters with um, some bumpy skin. It's definitely one of the easier ways to do bumpy skin and I hope that is helpful.